MDCC has your college experience close to home. A quality education, passionate instructors, and financial support. It's the place your journey begins. Visit msdelta.edu and register today. Dream big, plan well, and be anything. My name is Ben Folk. I'm an instructor of music and entertainment industry studies. And today, I'd like to give you an inside look at our entertainment industry studies recording studios here on the Moorhead campus. Let's go. My heart is with the students. We are such a tight-knit group here in Business Office Technology. We just get to know them personally. We get to know them as far as what they want to do with their future to help guide and direct and um, be a part of them. Our students that go the accounting direction will take the same basic core classes that all BOT students take. They also begin to pick up advanced business accounting that the other majors do not. They take payroll accounting, they take income tax accounting, QuickBooks. They all will be able to go and be um, like a payroll clerk, an accounts payable receivable clerk. Some of our students want to go on to the university level and they can, and they're prepared to go on and get a, a maybe possibly a bachelor's degree in accounting or even get their CPA. Previous to this, I was actually a math major, but I have my own small business. So I like to use those experiences and share those with my students to hopefully inspire them. So in administrative office, you cover all of the Microsoft Office programs. You'll take Microsoft Word 1 and 2, you'll take Excel 1 and 2, and you'll take Microsoft Access. Also, you take business communications, so you learn how to communicate effectively in the business world, and that's so important. One really great benefit to our students is they get to do an externship. So they actually get to go out and shadow and work for a business. 
so they get those hands-on experiences. They can start off in any entry-level position as far as a payroll clerk goes, an administrative assistant, even possibly a manager of a business. When I came up, you know, everybody said go to a four-year college, blah, blah, blah. Really and truly, if I had it to do over again, I would come to a community college and learn a skill because skilled labor right now, these guys are the future. They're gonna be the ones making the money. We do offer a certificate program, a technical certificate program, and an associate's degree out of this program. So there's three career paths that they could take. A one year, two year, or take some academics and do an associate's degree. We do an apprentice program and an on-the-job training program through Win Job Center with several of our dealers in our area. And I've got dealerships and private guys just beating the door down needing technicians. So this skill right here is something they can carry on through life, they can make a living at. If you know what you're doing, you can make six figures. No problem. That's a lot of money. I've been on heavy equipment my entire life. Yeah, I was nine years old and my dad told me to dig a ditch about a mile long and left me there for a week and I did it. It's a lot of different pieces of equipment it takes to get the job done. We have backhoes, skid steers, track loaders, bulldozers, motor graders, dump trucks. You need to know all of them and be a master at one or two of them. That way you can fluctuate throughout a construction job site. Construction equipment, it's everywhere. My long-term goal has always been to teach. I had a professor when I was in culinary school that was kind of one of these life-changing guys. Spent a lot of time and effort with me. Uh, and my long-term goal was always to give back, to be able to share my knowledge of food uh, with a younger generation. In the culinary world, our end game is very simple. We're trying to entertain you and we're trying to fulfill you. Whether it's through the sight of the food, the smell of the food, or the taste of the food, you have to have all three of those aspects together to make a really, really good dish. There's one thing their freshman year that I just beat to death, and it's the six keys to becoming a professional chef. Knowledge, skill, taste, judgment, dedication, and pride. And if a student has those six things and follows through with them, they will be wildly successful. Having a dream and following through with that dream is probably one of the most rewarding things that I can have. We are broad in our area of what we teach. A student can come through and they can go in the mechanical design aspect of it. They can go into the architectural. They can go into the civil and surveying, estimating. I would say this is probably the sixth or fifth year that we've been heavy into the 3D printing. It is a valuable tool and it's the wave of the future. You don't have to have an art background. You don't have to have an engineering background. You want to pursue a four-year degree? We've got different avenues for that also. So my spare time, I'm still drawing at home, uh, designing residential homes and commercial buildings. I love what I do. And when I can teach a student to do and love what I do, it makes my day. It's wide open with electrical technology. We start with basic residential wiring, 
uh, we start talking about how ACDC works together. And then we go into motor control for our second semester. Then after the first year, we go into pneumatics and hydraulics. Fourth semester, we go into AutoCAD. We go into PLC, Programmable Logic Control. So anything to do with electrical, we basically cover that. Their career options are unlimited, so you could be just a regular handyman doing residential, putting ceiling fans up, remodels for kitchens, can lights, receptacles, hanging wall-mounted TVs. You could go work with a grain bin system. You could work for a farmer, a grain elevator. Cellular South picks our guys up because they need technicians for the towers. They can make 50, 60 grand starting out. I have students who are hired before they get out of school. Our program deals more with the agronomy side of agriculture and how to grow crops. Also with the agribusiness side. We talk about yield monitors on combines and cotton pickers. We talk about uh, guidance on tractors. We talk about variable rate technologies. Talking a little bit about remote sensing and how we're using the drones out on the farm. We get into dealing with a little bit on livestock. We cover so many weeks for each crop that we grow around here. And I also teach a farm machinery and shop management class. With the technological background we've got now in agriculture, there are some good paying jobs out there waiting. And right now we've got more people calling in with jobs than we've got graduates to fill them. It's very special to me that you can take a seed and plant it in the ground and you can see a plant grow and you can see something to harvest from it. MDCC has your college experience close to home. A quality education, passionate instructors, and financial support. It's the place your journey begins. Visit msdelta.edu and register today. Dream big, plan well, and be anything. Love the field of study, love refrigeration. It's what I've done basically since I got out of high school. I came right into this same program in this same shop. Well, with HVAC, there's so many different avenues you can take between refrigeration, ice machines, commercial refrigeration, uh, residential heating and air conditioning, commercial heating and air conditioning, and so on and so forth. There's endless opportunities for these guys. Our goal is to have these sophomores placed at a job where after spring break, they don't come back. They're on the job learning and providing for their family. There's nothing better to have a student come back after five or six years to give you their success story. How they went from where they were to where they are now, and I was a part of that. I am a graduate of Mississippi Delta. I stayed here four years. I took HVAC and I took industrial electricity slash industrial maintenance. I don't get stuck in a rut. That's why I chose industrial maintenance, heating and air, for the simple reason I I'm not stuck in a building all day. I might be wiring up lights at a customer's house today. I might be working on a well motor tomorrow. Then they might want to go to a factory. Then they might want to go work for a welding company. A student will be able to decide what way he wants to go. If they're serious, they can get a job anywhere. Well, I tell them if they have a willingness to learn, I can show them how to get out and get a good job 
and they can make all the money they want to. You know, they get top pay when they graduate. For two years, you can make anywhere from $18, $24 an hour, somewhere in that range. I really like when I see a student learn something. That's very rewarding. Precision agriculture essentially is applying crop production inputs on a site-specific basis to reduce waste, increase profit, and maintain the quality of the environment. It's uh, everything from working on the computer and geographic information systems, how we look at imagery, do prescription maps, to trapping beavers, to, to learning about wild hog control and what the best methods are for that. It's a two-year program, so you can get an associate's degree or you can do it in essentially a year and a half if you want to just get the certificate in precision agriculture. And if you would like to continue on to a university with a four-year degree, there's a great articulation that we have now with Mississippi State University and also Alcorn. What I enjoy about teaching is taking a student who has never been around welding before, and by the time we're through with them, they're able to go out and get a job and make a living and provide for themselves and their families. Job prospects look good. If you want to get out there and work, the jobs are there. Your range in which you can go basically depends on your work ethic. My class size started as 12 people, two of which are already at work. They've been working for two weeks now. They don't even come to class. They come and take their exam at the end of the year, and they've been getting a paycheck. You can make all the money that you're willing to go out and make. The sky's the limit. MDCC has your college experience close to home. A quality education, passionate instructors, and financial support. It's the place your journey begins. Visit msdelta.edu and register today. Dream big, plan well, and be anything.
My name is Ben Folk. I'm an instructor of music and entertainment industry studies. And today, I'd like to give you an inside look at our entertainment industry studies recording studios here on the Moorhead campus. Let's go. My heart is with the students. We are such a tight-knit group here in Business Office Technology. We just get to know them personally. We get to know them as far as what they want to do with their future to help guide and direct and um, be a part of them. Our students that go the accounting direction will take the same basic core classes that all BOT students take. They also begin to pick up advanced business accounting that the other majors do not. They take payroll accounting, they take income tax accounting, QuickBooks. They all will be able to go and be um, like a payroll clerk, an accounts payable receivable clerk. Some of our students want to go on to the university level and they can, and they're prepared to go on and get a, a possibly a bachelor's degree in accounting or even get their CPA. Previous to this, I was actually a math major, but I have my own small business. So I like to use those experiences and share those with my students to hopefully inspire them. So in administrative office, you cover all of the Microsoft Office programs. You'll take Microsoft Word 1 and 2, you'll take Excel 1 and 2, and you'll take Microsoft Access. Also, you take business communications, so you learn how to communicate effectively in the business world, and that's so important. One really great benefit to our students is they get to do an externship. So they actually get to go out and shadow and work for a business. So they get those hands-on experiences. They can start off in any entry-level position as far as a payroll clerk goes, an administrative assistant, even possibly a manager of a business. When I came up, you know, everybody said, go to a four-year college, blah, blah, blah. Really and truly, if I had it to do over again, I would come to a community college and learn a skill. Because skilled labor right now, these guys are the future. They're going to be the ones making the money. We do offer a certificate program, a technical certificate program, and an associate's degree out of this program. So there's three career paths that they could take. A one-year, two-year, or take some academics and do an associate's degree. 
We do an apprentice program and an on-the-job training program through Wynn Job Center with several of our dealers in our area. And I've got dealerships and private guys just beating the door down needing technicians. So this skill right here is something they can carry on through life, they can make a living at. If you know what you're doing, you can make six figures. No problem. That's a lot of money. I've been on heavy equipment my entire life. Yeah, I was nine years old and my dad told me to dig a ditch about a mile long and left me there for a week and I did it. It's a lot of different pieces of equipment it takes to get the job done. We have backhoes, kid steers, track loaders, bulldozers, motor graders, dump trucks. You need to know all of them and be a master at one or two of them. That way you can fluctuate throughout a construction job site. Construction equipment, it's everywhere. My long-term goal has always been to teach. I had a professor when I was in culinary school that was kind of one of these life-changing guys. Spent a lot of time and effort with me. Uh, and my long-term goal was always to give back, to be able to share my knowledge of food uh, with a younger generation. In the culinary world, our end game is very simple. We're trying to entertain you and we're trying to fulfill you. Whether it's through the sight of the food, the smell of the food, or the taste of the food, you have to have all three of those aspects together to make a really, really good dish. There's one thing their freshman year that I just beat to death, and it's the six keys to becoming a professional chef. Knowledge, skill, taste, judgment, dedication, and pride. And if a student has those six things and follows through with them, they will be wildly successful. And we're set. Mississippi Delta versus Holmes Community College on homecoming day here in Moorhead, Mississippi. And you have Trey Hobbs on the play-by-play. has the ball. First and 10. In the backfield, we have John Ford as a quarterback. He hands it off to number two, Joe Moss, on a hefty gain on the first play of the drive. Looks like they're in a hurry up offense. He hands it off again. Looks like a short game, maybe a, about three or four yards. He fakes, and he throws it, he's wide open. Number one, just out there alone. Looks like a little confusion on Mississippi Delta's defense. Man, I tell you, that catch by number one, Deion Smith, the 6'4 sophomore from Jackson Academy. Holmes is now set for the extra point.
and it's good. Holmes go up early, seven to zero, and we'll be back. Having a dream and following through with that dream is probably one of the most rewarding things that I can have. We are broad in our area of what we teach. A student can come through and they can go in the mechanical design aspect of it. They can go into the architectural. They can go into the civil and surveying, estimating. I would say this is probably the sixth or fifth year that we've been heavy into the 3D printing. It is a valuable tool and it's the wave of the future. You don't have to have an art background. You don't have to have an engineering background. You want to pursue a four-year degree? And we're back. Mississippi Delta is set to return. Number 11, Jaquan Fry on the return. That was Fry with the return for the Trojans. Let's see if this Mississippi Delta offense responds back in a big way. I'll tell you, despite the scores over the last few games, the Mississippi Delta defense has been playing exceptionally well. Looks like we have Troy Griffin taking the snaps. Number 24, Davion Austin on the carry. Looks like a big hit by number nine on the Holmes defense. Jalen Towns from Grenada, Mississippi, freshman. Short pass over the middle. Received by number 19, Trey Brewer. The freshman from Memphis, Tennessee. Looks like a gain of about five. Ninety on the stop as Mississippi Delta tries the quarterback keeper. That's number 90, Corian Mathis from Mendenhall, Mississippi, with the stop. Number 28, Davin Klein, back to punt. The sophomore from, from Pash Christian. It's like a short punt. Holmes will get the ball in their own territory. Not too far from midfield. The handoff to number seven. Darion Townsend from Winona, Mississippi, right up Highway 82. Tackled by number 95, Robinson for the Trojans. Aaron Robinson on the stop from Rolling Fork, Mississippi. Another run. He'll be stopped by a host of Trojans. By a gang of Trojans. That'll be third and seven. This will be a big play right here for Mississippi Delta to stop Holmes' early momentum. And that'll be an incomplete pass as he couldn't gain possession of the ball. 
before he went out of bounds. Mississippi Delta with a big stop. Number 17, Daniel Hall, back to receive the punt. Rolling fork of Mississippi. And that'll be in Mississippi Delta's territory. Let's see if Mississippi Delta can get something going on this drive. I tell you what, that quarterback, number five, Troy Griffin, is pretty shifty on his feet. Looks like they're in the gun. <laughs> Looks like a keeper. It'll be second down and about seven. He drops back. He passed over the middle right through his hands. Pass intended for number seven, Ja'Kale Allen drops it. I think he was just trying to move before he caught the ball. Griffin is back in the gun. Drops back, scrambles a little bit. He takes off. Looks like he may be an inch short. Don't know where they'll mark it at. Looks like Mississippi Delta will be going for it. Ref is having a conversation about it. Oh, looks like Mississippi Delta will get the first down. Mississippi Delta has one in the backfield and three wide outs. Devian Austin still on his feet, just can't get around that corner as he's stopped by number 36 for Holmes' defense. Number 36 will be Daniel Smith and number 99, Maxton Woodward. Loss of one. Oh, looks like number 90. Oh, excuse me. Offense. False start. They'll be pushed back. Second and long here. The snap, he drops back, he passes. Intended for number 14, Swahili Irby. Can't hold on to it as he was hit, trying to catch. Third and long here. He passes right through the hands. Again, pass intended 
For number 14, Swahili Irby. That'll be fourth and long. The Mississippi Delta out is out to punt. Number 16, Dakari Johnson back to receive the punt from LaFleur County High School right down the road. Ooh, is that, that was almost blocked. Short return as Mississippi Delta gets down there quick to make the stop. John Ford from Summerall, Mississippi. He's taking a snap. He drops back in the pocket. He fires. Incomplete pass intended for number 12, Colton DeShazo from Diablerville. Pass was a little bit behind him. He drops back again. Complete pass. Number 38, Amari Pam from Hollandale, Mississippi on the stop. He hands it off. Number two, he escapes a few arm tackles. Joe Moss from Grenada, Mississippi. Mississippi Delta takes a timeout and we'll be back after the timeout. Thanks for that also. So my spare time, I'm still drawing at home, uh, designing residential homes and commercial buildings. I love what I do. And when I can teach a student to do and love what I do, it makes my day. It's wide open with electrical technology. We start with basic residential wiring. Uh, we start talking about how ACDC works together. And then we go into motor control for our second semester. Then after the first year, we go into... And we're back after the timeout. Home oh, snaps, quarterback drops back. A uh, catch as he goes up high to get it, number 15. Jarvis Rush from Louisville, Mississippi. And that's a complete pass to number 16. Dakari Johnson. No huddle offense. Oh, he gets in the backfield. Number 40, Kennedy Baker gets in the backfield, but he snatches his helmet off. It was unintentional, but ref still throw the flag. Face mask, on the 40, half the distance to the goal, on first down. That'll be a face mask on number 40. Kennedy Baker. Half the distance to the goal.
If Bob had to have to guess this right there or hand it off to number two or throw a quick slant across the middle. Well, as I said, they will hand it off to number two, Joe Moss. 99, Ted Webster on the stop. They'll hand it off again. And that'll be a big stop for Mississippi Delta defense, Kennedy Baker and number 12, Shardrick Pruitt gets back there quick to stop that touchdown. Third and 10, well third and goal I would say. And that'll be offside on the defense. Looks like they're running a wildcat offense. Vontrez Rush from Hollandale, Mississippi. On the keeper, looks like he gets in. Holmes out for the extra point. And that's good on the extra point. Holmes Community College 14, Mississippi Delta zero, and we'll be back. Fourth semester, we go into AutoCAD. We go into PLC, Programmable Logic Control. Anything to do with electrical, we basically cover that. Their career options are unlimited, so you could be just a regular handyman doing residential, putting ceiling fans up, remodels for kitchens, can lights, receptacles, hanging wall-mounted TVs. You could go work with a grain bin system. You could work for a farmer, a grain elevator. Cellular South picks our guys up because they need technicians for the towers. They can make 50, 60 grand starting out. I have students who are hired before they get out of school. And we're back as Holmes is set to kick off. Looks like they're having a little issue with the wind here at Mississippi Delta. Out of bounds. Man, I tell you, that Delta wind is nothing to play with. Back when I was playing baseball right here, you could just <laughs> some days hit a ball, a routine fly ball to center field and it'll just keep carrying over the fence. Mississippi Delta out on offense. Number five, Troy Griffin is still taking a snaps. Davion Austin in the backfield along with him. On a keeper, Troy Griffin slides. Good game for the Trojans. Nice gain of about six. That'll be second and four. Mississippi Delta in their own territory. Pass to 24, gets the first down. Uh, 
have a four wide out set. Shotgun formation. Keeper again. I tell you, Troy Griffin can really use those That's legs. Short game in Bulldogs territory. Second down. He actually runs really well. A little bit undersized, not your typical quarterback size, but he gets the job done. Number 24 looks like he gets back to the line of scrimmage. No gain on the run. Third down. Third down. Maybe third down. Let's see if Mississippi Delta can get a first down here on third down. He takes the snap. He drops back. He throws. Incomplete pass. Intended for number 24, Davion Austin, the running back. Mississippi Delta punt team is out. Oh, and he blocks it. is out for offense again. The momentum is in their favor right now. The sweep to number five, Vontrez Rush. <laughs> Fun fact, I grew up with Ronald Vontrez Rush's brother. One of his older brothers. Complete pass to Vontrez Rush. The sophomore from Hollandale, Mississippi. Flag on the play. False start on offense. That'll be first and 15. Holmes' offensive line is huge. Markel Bell from Cleveland, 6'9", 345 pounds. I got a chance to see him play in high school. Man, that kid has the potential to play some big time football just based off of his size alone. Looks like another flag is on the play. Holding on the offense. The 
That would be first and 25. Vontrez rushes in motion. And he throws it into the ground as he's rushed by a pair of Mississippi Delta defenders. Looks like as soon as he got the ball in his hands, they were in his face. Deflected pass by number 45, Jacoby Franklin from Bell Zone in Mississippi. The third and forever as he drops back and makes a pass. Man, what a catch by number 12. Got to be a couple flags on the play. Not sure what the call is. powwow now about the call. That's an offense. I'm not sure what happened. Uh, I may need to see an instant replay on that call. But that was a great catch. Number 21 on a tackle, Vontrez Rush on the catch. Tries to catch it with one hand. Incomplete pass to Darion Townsend. That'll be third and seven. Hopefully Mississippi Delta can force a field goal. He marks him at the one. There you are, Townsend on a catch. 18 on the keeper for the touchdown. And that'll be. 20 to zero in the first quarter. Holmes is out for the extra point. He kicks and it's good and we'll be back. Our program deals more with the agronomy side of agriculture and how to grow crops. Also with the agribusiness side, we talk about yield monitors on combines and cotton pickers. We talk about uh, guidance on tractors. We talk about variable rate technologies. We talk a little bit about remote sensing and how we're using the drones out on the farm. We get into dealing with a little bit on livestock. 
We cover so many weeks for each crop that we grow around here. And I also teach a farm machinery and shop management class. With the technological background we've got now in agriculture, there are some good paying jobs out there waiting and right now. Ball is kicked. Number 11 on the return. Jaquan Fry gets it out to about the 34-yard line on the Mississippi Delta's 34-yard line. Oh, I stand corrected. It's actually at the 36. Four on the carry, Davion Austin. No game, second down. Second down for the Trojans. Complete pass to number 19. Trey Brewer. That'll be third and six. Oh. Complete pass. Let's see what the call is here. Pass to number seven, Jaquel Allen. Will be making their way to the sideline. Waiting on the referees to make the call. Sides on the defense. And that'll be the end of the first quarter. And we'll be back. And we've got graduates to fill them. It's very special to me that you can take a seed and plant it in the ground and you can see a plant grow and you can see something to harvest from it. MDCC has your college experience close to home. A quality education, passionate instructors, and financial support. And we're back to start here in the second quarter. Troy drops back. He makes the pass off of his back foot, and it's intercepted by number 27. Latarius Haynes.
fun fact for the day. It's the 30th year of the 1993 championship won here at Mississippi Delta. We have a couple of those 93 Trojans in attendance today. Holmes is in Mississippi Delta's territory. Fake handoff and a pass by Number 18, John Ford to number one, Deion Smith. Looks like that may be a taunting flag. Taunting was even about. But I get it when you're in a game like this. And hey, you on this? Hey, really good job, man. Number 2012, Herman, on the defense. Number six, upcoming decline. The touchdown is good. After the play, dead balls, unsportsmanlike conduct on the offense, number one. And that'll be a touchdown and flag after the play is actually a double flag called holding on number six on the defense. The extra point is up. And it's good. And we'll be back. It's the place your journey begins. Visit msdelta.edu and register today. Dream big, plan well, and be anything. Love the field of study, love refrigeration. It's what I've done basically since I got out of high school. I came right into this same program in this same shop. Well, with HVAC, there's so many different avenues you can take between refrigeration, ice machines, commercial refrigeration, uh, residential heating and air conditioning, commercial heating and air conditioning, and so on and so forth. There's endless opportunities for these guys. Our goal is to have these sophomores placed at a job where after spring break, they don't come back. They're on the job learning and providing for their family. There's nothing better to have a student come back after five or six years to give you their success story, how they went from where they were. And we're back. Mississippi Delta is on the return. Oh. Not sure if it's a fumble or not, but one of Holmes' player gets up with a football. Trojans back on offense in their own territory. Hands it off to number 24, Davion Austin. Number 27 and number 32 on the tackle. Gain of one on the play. Go 
Griffin drops back. He passes and looks like that pass is a little wide. Third and nine. Let's see if Mississippi Delta can get a first down here. He drops back. He passes. Look like he's stopped on the short gain. Pass completed to number 13, Devion Liddell from Byram, Mississippi. Mississippi Delta punt team is out now. Number 16 back to receive the punt. Dakari Johnson from LaFleur County High School. A couple of miles down the road. Punt nearly blocked. And Holmes will get the ball in their own territory on a 38-yard line. And he stopped in the backfield by number 51, Javarius Sherrod from Itabena, Mississippi, right up the road. He's second and 14. He drops back. He passes. Short pass to number two. The running back, Joe Moss, number nine, Jordan Johnson on the stop. That'll be third and four. And he's stopped by number 51, Javaria Sherrod. Two big plays by Sherrod on this drive. Holmes out to punt. Mississippi Delta on their own 15-yard line, 14-yard line, excuse me. Let's see if they could get something going on this drive. Pass to number 13. 
Devian Liddell, number 10 on the stop, on the tackle. Detravion Parker from Grenada, Mississippi. Mississippi Delta is in the gun. Drops back. He scrambles. He looks. Oh, and he drops it. Not sure if it was out of bounds or still in play. Fumble recovered by number 10, DeTravion Parker from Grenada, Mississippi. Ball is on the Mississippi Delta's 21-yard line. And he hands it off. Like he stopped. Gain of three, second and seven. Pass over the middle, caught by number 12, Colton DeShazo. Short gain on the play. Number seven, Darion Townsend. Looks like they're in a Wildcat offense again with Vontrez Rush taking the snaps. Number 38, Amari Pam on the stop. If I had to guess, they'll be running a fade route or a slant here. Oh. Touchdown. Holmes. Score for the 18 on the hookup to number 16, Dakari Johnson. Number 17, Billy, number 72, Billy Cooley's in now. Looks like the extra point is good and we'll be back. They are now, and I was a part of that. I am a graduate of Mississippi Delta. I stayed here four years. I took HVAC and I took industrial electricity slash industrial maintenance. I don't get stuck in a rut. That's why I chose industrial maintenance, heating and air, for the simple reason I, I'm not stuck in a building all day. I might be wiring up lights at a customer's house today. I might be working on a well motor tomorrow. Then they might want to go to a factory. 
then they might want to go work for a welding company. A student will be able And the kick is off. You at the back of the end zone, a touchback. First and 10, Mississippi Delta on their own 25-yard line. Hand it off, and he's met at the line of scrimmage. There's a flag on the play. Let's see what this call is. Uh, I guess he just threw the flag for fun there. No flag on the play. Second and 10. He hands it off again. Number 13 gets around the corner. Number 36 on the tackle. Daniel Smith. Let's see what this flag is about. The ref's discussing it. That'll be a holding on the offense. On number 66, Derek Bolton. Penalty decline. That'll be third and seven. Excuse me, third and six. Oh, that should be an offside. I'm surprised there was no offsides flag there. I guess. The ref just <laughs> decided not to throw it this time, but he threw it a few plays ago for nothing. Everybody on the field thought there should be an offside flag there. Pun is away. He catches it. And he's carrying a couple of Mississippi Delta defenders right there. Holmes is in the gun. Number 21 stops the touchdown, but number 18 on the hookup to Jarvis Rush. A big chunk there. Pass intended for number 15, Jarvis Rush. Incomplete. Up, 
think that'll be second and ten. Holmes is in the gun. Oh, he leaps up. And tries to get the extra, extra, extra yards, but he stopped at the one yard line. I tell you what, that's a tough play by the quarterback. You don't see many quarterbacks doing that nowadays. But I commend the effort from number 18, John Ford. Number four, Lonnie Ratliff in from Duluth, Georgia. He hands it off, and he stopped. That's number 33, and Sherrod as well on the tackle. Thomas and Sherrod on the tackle for the Trojans. Second and goal. That'll be second and goal. False start on the offense. False start. Offense, number 73. Five yard game. Big second down. They'll be back to the Mississippi Delta six yard line now. I'm no genius or anything, but I think they may be handing the ball off or they'll be making a pass here. Number 15 on the catch. I thought it was nearly intercepted, but number 15 comes out of nowhere and makes the grab for the touchdown. That'll be a six-yard touchdown pass from Lonnie Ratliff to Jarvis Rush. on the extra point and it's good and we'll be back uh, what way he wants to go if they're serious they can get a job anywhere well i tell them if they have a willingness to learn i can show them how to get out and get a good job and they can make all the money they want to you know they get top pay when they graduate for two years you can make anywhere from 18 24 dollars an hour somewhere in that range I really like when I see a student learn something. That's very rewarding. like we missed the kickoff. Not sure what happened. Mississippi Deltas with their backs against their own goal line. Looks like that'll be a false start on the offense. Half a distance to the goal. Five minutes left in the second quarter. Uh, 
hands it off. Number 24, Davion Austin on the carry. Number nine, Jalen Towns on the tackle. Gain of three, second and seven. Keeper and he fumbles. Recovered by Delta. It'll be third and nine now. And he throws and is caught by number seven, Jaquel Allen from Ruville, Mississippi, a couple of miles up the road. I think Troy Griffin is at his best when he's passing the ball, when he's not rushing to make a throw. Looks like a double reverse. He gets around the corner. He has room. He's going, and he's stopped on the home side of the 50. On a big game. I don't know if Mississippi Delta realizes it, but this is a long game and they still have a chance. Number 24 on the carry, number nine on the stop. Second and nine, he got a yard on that play. Like I was saying, when Troy Griffin is patient, he makes some great throws. Good pass. Troy Griffin on the hookup to number 13, Devion Liddell. This will be the first time Mississippi Delta gets in the red zone. A score before halftime will be great here for Mississippi Delta. He escapes one tackle. He gets around the corner. Man, I tell you, Troy Griffin can really move. I tell you what, I honestly like to see him at slot one day in the future. Second and two. He scrambles. He throws. And that'll be a touchdown by Mississippi Delta. Troy Griffin on the hookup to number seven, Jaquel Allen.
and I think that's a big time play before halftime for Mississippi Delta to score that touchdown. Maybe the momentum will shift in their favor. Devin Austin on the extra point. It's up and it's blocked. Holmes picks it up. He's running. He's going. And all the way back by number 27. Latarius Haynes from Louisville, Mississippi. Not only two points for Holmes Community College. And we'll be back. Fifty nine seconds left in the first half. As I stated before, I'm Trey Hobbs, giving you the play by play, the head softball coach here at Mississippi Delta. I actually played baseball here in 2014 and 2015 before I went on to Delta State. Had a great career here and at Delta State. Played a little minor league ball, but I'm excited to be back home to turn this softball program around. It's an honor to be back home, I'll say. Set to kick off now. Number 16 returns it for a short return, not a hefty one, Dakari Johnson. Still in the game for Holmes. The freshman Ronnie, Lonnie Ratliff from Duluth, Georgia. And the pass is completed to number 17, Bryston Spencer from Neshoba Central. Pass over the middle to number 12. Number 21 stops that touchdown. Time out on the field and we'll be back. Precision agriculture essentially is applying crop production inputs on a site-specific basis to reduce waste, increase profit, and maintain the quality of the environment. It's uh, everything from working on the computer and geographic information systems, how we look at imagery, do prescription maps, to trapping beavers, to, to learning about wild hog control and what the best methods are for that. It's a two-year program, so you can get an associate's degree or you can do it in essentially a year and a half if you want to just get the certificate in precision agriculture. And if you would like to continue on to a university with a four-year degree, there's a great articulation that we have now at Mississippi State University and also Alcorn. And we're back on the fade route, incomplete. To number 28, J.J. Grant from West Lauderdale, Mississippi. Play clock is winding down, down to 15. 
He's in the pocket. He scrambles. And he's met by two of Mississippi Delta defenders. Number 50, Markavis Smith. I'm not sure <laughs> what the timeout is about when you're up 40-46 with 22 seconds left in the first half. I'm just not sure about that one. We have a hurt Trojan down on the field. He gets up with the help of Felicia Salter and company. Felicia is our athletic trainer here. She does a great job. I've been knowing Felicia since I was in high school. When she was at Yazoo City High School. Third and ten. Incomplete pass. That'll be fourth down. Holmes brings their field goal unit out. Hey, we have Luke Stanley up here in the booth with us today. I had the pleasure of playing with Luke at Delta State. He's a head baseball coach here at Mississippi Delta now. Yard field goal for number 84, Jalen Ballard. It's up and it's no good. Mississippi Delta is out. Play clock is winding down. Down to about 10 now. Snaps. He drops back. He scrambles. He rolls out. Looks like an incomplete pass intended for Swahili Irby from Louisville, Mississippi. Ten seconds left in the first half. Excuse me, two seconds left in the first half. And that'll be the end of the first half. Holmes 44, Mississippi Delta 6.
What I enjoy about teaching is taking a student who has never been around welding before, and by the time we're through with them, they're able to go out and get a job and make a living and provide for themselves and their families. Job prospects look good. If you want to get out there and work, the jobs are there. Your range in which you can go basically depends on your work ethic. My class size started as 12 people, two of which are already at work. They've been working for two weeks now. They don't even come to class. They come and take their exam at the end of the year, and they've been getting a paycheck. You can make all the money that you're willing to go out and make. The sky's the limit.
MDCC has your college experience close to home. A quality education, passionate instructors, and financial support. It's the place your journey begins. Visit msdelta.edu and register today. Dream big, plan well, and be anything. My name is Ben Folk. I'm an instructor of music and entertainment industry studies. And today, I'd like to give you an inside look at our entertainment industry studies recording studios here on the Moorhead campus. Let's go. My heart is with the students. We are such a tight-knit group here in Business Office Technology. We just get to know them personally. We get to know them as far as what they want to do with their future to help guide and direct and um, be a part of them. Our students that go the accounting direction will take the same basic core classes that all BOT students take. They also begin to pick up advanced business accounting that the other majors do not. They take payroll accounting, they take income tax accounting, QuickBooks. They all will be able to go and be um, like a payroll clerk, an accounts payable receivable clerk. Some of our students want to go on to the university level and they can, and they're prepared to go on and get a, a maybe possibly a bachelor's degree in accounting or even get their CPA.
Previous to this, I was actually a math major, but I have my own small business. So I like to use those experiences and share those with my students to hopefully inspire them. So in administrative office, you cover all of the Microsoft Office programs. You'll take Microsoft Word 1 and 2, you'll take Excel 1 and 2, and you'll take Microsoft Access. Also, you take business communications, so you learn how to communicate effectively in the business world, and that's so important. One really great benefit to our students is they get to do an externship, so they actually get to go out and shadow and work for a business, so they get those hands-on experiences. They can start off in any entry-level position as far as a payroll clerk goes, an administrative assistant, even possibly a manager of a business. When I came up, you know, everybody said go to a four-year college, blah, blah, blah. Really and truly, if I had it to do over again, I would come to a community college and learn a skill. Because skilled labor right now, these guys are the future. They're going to be the ones making the money. We do offer a certificate program, a technical certificate program, and an associate's degree out of this program. So there's three career paths that they could take. A one-year, two-year, or take some academics and do an associate's degree. We do an apprentice program and an on-the-job training program through Wynn Job Center with several of our dealers in our area. And I've got dealerships and private guys just beating the door down needing technicians. So this skill right here is something they can carry on through life, they can make a living at. If you know what you're doing, you can make six figures, no problem. That's a lot of money. I've been on heavy equipment my entire life. Yeah, I was nine years old and my dad told me to dig a ditch about a mile long and left me there for a week and I did it. It's a lot of different pieces of equipment it takes to get the job done. We have backhoes, skid steers, track loaders, bulldozers, motor graders, dump trucks. You need to know all of them and be a master at one or two of them. That way you can fluctuate throughout a construction job site. Construction equipment, it's everywhere. My long-term goal has always been to teach. I had a professor when I was in culinary school that was kind of one of these life-changing guys, spent a lot of time and effort with me. Uh, my long-term goal was always to give back, to be able to share my knowledge of food uh, with a younger generation. In the culinary world, our end game is very simple. We're trying to entertain you and we're trying to fulfill you. Whether it's through the sight of the food, the smell of the food, or the taste of the food, you have to have all three of those aspects together to make a really, really good dish. There's one thing their freshman year that I just beat to death, and it's the six keys to becoming a professional chef. Knowledge, skill, taste, judgment, dedication, and pride. And if a student has those six things and follows through with them, they will be wildly successful. Having a dream and following through with that dream is probably one of the most rewarding things that I can have. We are broad in our area of what we teach. A student can come through and they can go in the mechanical design aspect of it. They can go into the architectural. They can go into the civil and surveying, estimating. I would say this is probably the sixth or fifth year that we've been heavy into the 3D printing. It is a valuable tool and it's the wave of the future. You don't have to have an art background. You don't have to have an engineering background. You want to pursue a four-year degree? 
we've got different avenues for that also. So my spare time, I'm still drawing at home, uh, designing residential homes and commercial buildings. I love what I do. And when I can teach a student to do and love what I do, it makes my day. It's wide open with electrical technology. We start with basic residential wiring. And we're back, start of the third quarter. Mississippi Delta is receiving the ball. That'll be a touchback. The ball will be placed on the Mississippi Delta 25 yard line. As I stated before I have, hopefully that Mississippi Delta touchdown before the half will give them momentum to try to climb back into this game. A lot of game left. Number five, Troy Griffin is still back taking the snaps. You know, hopefully the Mississippi Delta Trojans understand it's not over until it's over. This game is all about inches and momentum, I would say. Keeper, Troy Griffin on the keeper gets it close on Holmes' 47-yard line. in the gun. Looks like a little co miscommunication there as the pass in it is intended for number 19, Trey Brewer. I will say something you rarely see now in high school and college football is the eye formation. A lot of teams have shifted to the gun and the pistol. He gets rid of it to avoid the sack. There's a flag on the play. Have an injured bulldog on the play. And we'll be back. We start talking about how ACDC works together, and then we go into motor control for our second semester. Then after the first year, we go into pneumatics and hydraulics. Fourth semester, we go into AutoCAD, we go into PLC, Programmable Logic Control. So anything to do with electrical, we basically cover that. Their career options are unlimited, so you could be just a regular handyman doing residential, putting ceiling fans up, remodels for kitchens, can lights, receptacles, hanging wall-mounted TVs. You could go work with a grain bin system. You could work for a farmer, a grain elevator. Cellular South picks our guys up because they need technicians for the towers. They can make 50, 60 grand starting out. I have students who are hired before they get out of school. Our program deals more with the agronomy side of agriculture and how to grow crops. Also with the agribusiness side, we talk about yield monitors on combines and cotton pickers. We talk about uh, guidance on tractors. We talk about variable rate technologies. We talk a little bit about remote sensing and how we're using the drones out on the farm. We get into dealing with a little bit on livestock. And we're back. 
that penalty was an intentional grounding. He makes a throw on the run, and that's another pick by Holmes' defense. Their second pick of the evening. Number 36 on the interception, Daniel Smith from Provine High School out of Jackson, Mississippi. Provine High School is widely known for basketball. We want to thank Metcalf for their coverage of the MDCC Athletics. That's Metcalf for their coverage of the MDCC Athletics. Troy Griffin tried to make that throw on a run. If he would have just set his feet, you know, get his feet under him, make a strong throw there, give the wide receiver a chance. Pass completed from Ratliff to DeShazo. Hopefully I'm saying his last name right. On the carry, number two is met by Kennedy Baker in the backfield. Third and eight, he drops back. He throws. He's wide. Open, nobody around him. Number 12, Colton DeShazo for the touchdown. Number 84 is out for the extra point. Extra point is good, and we'll take a break. So many weeks for each crop that we grow around here, and I also teach a farm machinery and shop management class. With the technological background we've got now in agriculture, there are some good paying jobs out there waiting, and right now we've got more people calling in with jobs than we've got graduates to fill them. It's very special to me that you can take a seed and plant it in the ground and you can see a plant grow and you see something to harvest from it. Touchback, ball will be spotted on the Mississippi Delta 25. Mississippi Delta offense is back out. Hopefully they can chip, chip away at this lead. Number 13 on the carry. No gain by Devian Liddell. Oh, gain of one, excuse me, the second and nine. He drops back, he throws. 
pass broken up by number 14. Christavius Savior. Third and nine, Mississippi Delta in their own territory. That'll be three and out as Mississippi Delta's punt team is coming out. nearly blocked. Down at Holmes 36 yard line. Screen play. Oh. Incomplete pass intended for number 80. Number Jeremiah Short from MRA. Number seven on the carry with a big gain. Darion Townsend. First down run for the Bulldogs into Trojan territory. Oh, nearly intercepted. Number 21, Darion Taylor. Second and 10. Man, there was nothing but daylight for Darion Taylor had he intercepted that one. Run again. Third down and third down and three. Third and three for the Bulldogs. Hands it off again. That's number fifty one. That'll be fourth and short. Looks like Holmes will be going for it. Incomplete pass, turnover on downs as he was rushing to make that pass. Not sure what that play call was about, but Holmes has been doing good running the ball. If it's not broke, don't fix it. Oh, excuse me. They gave him the first down on the previous play before the last one. Now it's second and 10. Looks like a little miscommunication out there. Be 
third down and about four now. Five. Quarterback keeper, and he stopped in the backfield. Now number 45, Jacoby Franklin. Bad snap, picks it up, throws, gets one across the middle. First down reception. Number eight, KD Ransifer from Greenville Christian down in Greenville, Mississippi, my hometown. Number seven on the run. Darion Townsend didn't know which way he wanted to go. Second and 13. Holmes is in the shotgun. He drops back. And he is sacked. Oh, fumble Ruski. He fumbles and gets up and recovers his own fumble. <laughs> I tell you what, that is great hustle by number four as he fumbled and got up and got his own fumble. That's unusual. That'll be fourth in forever. Number 25 comes out on the field. With the old school cast on right there. He punts away. Nice bounce and awareness. Mississippi Delta will be on their own one yard line. We start the fourth quarter. Holmes 51, Mississippi Delta 6. MDCC has your college experience close to home. A quality education, passionate instructors, and financial support. It's the place your journey begins. Visit msdelta.edu and register today. Dream big, plan well, and be anything. Under the center. Offsides on the defense.
first and five. Hand it off. Gets around the corner. Makes a move. Number eight on the carry. <laughs> Looks like they take out the cameraman down there. <laughs> First and 10. He snaps it. He drops back. He makes a pass. Can't hang on to it as he was being hit. Pass intended for number 20, Trayvon Brown. Incomplete. On the keeper, Troy Griffin. It'll be third down. Third and six as he gained four on that play. Play like that one, you just have to throw it away. Even though he completed it. On the ret putt return, a hefty gain. Quarterback in for Holmes. Looks like number 19, Nigel Johnson from Starkville. 28 on the rush with a nice gain. Down to Mississippi Delta's one yard line. Excuse me, the third yard line. Time about MDCC and we'll be back. Love the field of study, love refrigeration. It's what I've done basically since I got out of high school. I came right into this same program in this same shop. Well, with HVAC, there's so many different avenues you can take between refrigeration ice machines, commercial refrigeration, uh, residential heating and air conditioning, commercial heating and air conditioning, and so on and so forth. There's endless opportunities for these guys. Our goal is to have these sophomores placed at a job where after spring break, 
they don't come back. They're on the job learning and providing for their family. There's nothing better to have a student come back after five or six years to give you their success story. How they went from where they were to where they are now, and I was a part of that. And we're back after the timeout. Number 28 in the backfield, J.J. Grant. He rushes. Down at the one yard line. Second down and goal. Fourth quarter. Number 19 was having a fit out there for some reason. Touchdown, Holmes. They're on for the extra point. It's up, and it's good. 57-6 in the fourth quarter, and we'll take a break. I am a graduate of Mississippi Delta. I stayed here four years. I took HVAC, and I took industrial electricity slash industrial maintenance. I don't get stuck in a rut. That's why I chose industrial maintenance, heating and air, for the simple reason I, I'm not stuck in a building all day. I might be wiring up lights at a customer's house today. I might be working on a well motor tomorrow. Then they might want to go to a factory. Then they might want to go work for a welding company. A student will be able to decide what way he wants to go. If they're serious, they can get a job anywhere. Kicks it off. Nice return by number 11, Jaquan Fry. To the 40 yard line, the Mississippi Delta's 40 yard line. Hands it off to number 20, Trayvon Brown. A little pushing and shoving going on down there. Not sure for what reason. Another handoff to number eight. Number eight on the carry, Emory James. Emory James up the middle. Third down. Maybe third down and seven. Third down and three, excuse me. Looking at the board and they had it wrong. Troy Griffin on a keeper. It'll be first down. Five and some change left in the fourth quarter.
number 20 on the carry, Trayvon Brown. Brown again on the carry for the Trojans. Stopped by a couple of Holmes Bulldogs. Number 20 on a carry again. Short carry for Brown. Wow. On a short wow. carry. Gain of maybe three. Third down. Third down and about four. Griffin on the keeper. He finally slips and goes down. On the play. Fourth down. Little chirping going on on the field. Klein back to punt. He makes a move, makes another move. Tries to stiff arm the guy. Ends up getting taken down. Well, looks like some pushes is going on. A couple of punches are being thrown. Man, that's just unbelievable. Not sure what it's about. Oh man, that could have gotten ugly real fast. Guys on both sides need to just cool it down. The referees are out there in a little tea party writing some stuff down. Having a powwow out there. And I'm sure there will be personal fouls on both sides. A lot of ejections. <laughs> When you come off a sideline, that's an automatic ejection. Only two from Holmes being ejected. A couple from Mississippi Delta. Me personally, I think some more from Holmes should be ejected.
Hey, it's not my call. Penalties offset, first down. I imagine Holmes will run the ball to run a timeout. And the shotgun. I'm gonna snap, I'm gonna hand it off. Second down and eight. And he runs it. Quarterback keeper. Number 12 on the tackle. Another rush. Number 28, J.J. Grant. And 28 on, again on the rush. Quarterback keeper, number 19 on the carry, Nigel Johnson. That may be the last play of the game. I would imagine it would be the last play of the game. And that will conclude the game. Holmes 58, Mississippi Delta 6. And you have Trey Hobbs on the play-by-play -play on today's game. And we thank you for watching. If they have a willingness to learn, I can show them how to get out and get a good job. And they can make all the money they want to. You know, they get top pay when they graduate. For two years, you can make anywhere from $18, $24 an hour, somewhere in that range. I really like when I see a student learn something. That's very rewarding.